may be a girl's best friend, but in these uncertain times, more and more high-end investors are warming up to these sparkling rocks. Are diamonds the new gold? CNBC's Mary Thompson joins us live from Graf's VIP room. Wait a second. Why am I not there in Manhattan with an exclusive look? Mary, how did you get in there? That is like putting a drunk in a bar room, Melissa. I think they just want to protect themselves. <laughs> we are here today with the CEO of Graf, Mr. Henry Bargasian. Thank you so much for having us. It's a very interesting Thank you so time. Much for being here. A very interesting time in the diamond industry. That's why we're here. You know, before we went to break, what I was saying is that fancy gems like the ones that fancy diamonds, the ones that you sell, have increased by 300% in value over the last 10 years. What's driving this increase? Well, we, we're really going through times that we have never seen before. The world is obviously a much smaller place than it has ever, be, ever been. And there is wealth being created every day all over places that we were not used to deal with before, Eastern Europe, Asia, India, China. And all these people uh, uh, really culturally love to put a certain percentage of their wealth in fine gems. And what's really interesting for us here in America is that this never happened before. The financial aspect of a jewelry transaction was always more or less ignored by the customer. And now for the first time they realize, especially after what has happened since 2008, that owning fine diamond is actually not a bad idea because they've kept their value through all this crisis and it continue to increase as we speak. You spoke earlier with our senior talent producer Lorianne LaRocco and you said for the first time ever you were seeing interest from private equity funds as well as private, in, private banks coming in here and saying we want to buy this as an investment, not as something to give to our wife or our girlfriend, but our investment. Um, what exactly are they buying when they come they in? They are looking for obviously the finest of the finest. Uh, as you said, it's the first time this ever happened, so it, it surprised a little bit all of us, but it's like looking at the art market. They really want the finest, the rarest, because obviously this is the surest bet that not only they're going to keep their value, but they're going to increase in value due to the demand. Is it demand as well? What is the supply like right now? For especially if we look over here, you know, we have a, a pair of earrings with two, um, I don't know other, any other way to say it, enormous yellow diamonds on them. So, uh, <laughs> enormous indeed. They're 50 carats each. Okay. So this is, this is, just to give you an idea how rare this is, this is the only pair in existence in the world of this size and this quality. And how much would someone pay for something like this? Millions of dollars millions of dollars north of 20 million so this is obviously extremely rare and that's the that's what drives the diamond business and it's also what is our problem is that the supply is what mother nature gives us and that's very small but is it a good investment there was a bubble and then a, a bursting of that bubble in the diamond business back in the 80s so if someone comes in and pays 25 million today can they be assured that in 10 years it might be 50 million I don't know if they're going to be a show it's going to be 50 million. What I know is that all the diamond industry foresees a 20% increase for the three to five years to come. What happened in 1980 was completely different. It was only focused on a very small portion of diamonds, one to two carat stones that were sold by so-called financial institutions which led their clients to believe that they could be traded as a commodity and bought and sell from one day to the next, which obviously is not the case. Okay, we want to thank you for spending some time with us. Again, we've been speaking My with... My pleasure. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. We've been speaking with Henri Bargasian, who is the CEO of Graf Diamonds, and we're going to continue this conversation, which you'll be able to see online at CNBC.com. Melissa, back to you. Wow.